Well, good morning, guys. I am at Warrior Rock. Normally, I would not fish this fishery until late August, but uh, I'm not going to be around to fish it. And also, I had planned on this year fishing Buoy 10. Even made reservations at campgrounds down there and whatnot. Uh, but then they came out with the regs for this year, and uh, we're only allowed one hatchery king at Buoy 10. And part of that is to protect the wild endangered Thule Chinook stocks. That's the, the Chinook that spawn in the lower Columbia tributaries, uh, which several of them are ESA listed. And I've been reading reports and watching a bunch of guide uh, videos on how the buoy 10 fishery is going this year and, you know, doing okay out in the ocean, which is not where I'm going to venture. I'm not going to venture across the, the bar, but in the river, they're catching like eight wild fish to one hatchery fish and uh for me the ethics of of that is is ridiculous as a biologist i'm just appalled at the idea of having to handle a bunch of fish unnecessarily just to harvest one when i can come up river to warrior rock and you know catch one fish and just be done um my impacts are much more likely to be less severe on wild fish populations when I can just target areas where it's primarily going to be up river brights or hatchery tule stock here at the mouth of the Lewis. And I would rather do that. I would rather come up and, you know, try and scratch out one of a thousand fish that are passing by than going down where there's potentially a lot more fish and having to handle a bunch of fish that don't need to be handled. So. I'm not optimistic about my prospects today, but I'm uh, going to give it a shot anyways. Got an outgoing tide here until like 8.30, so it's going to be trolling in high current before the tide releases, and then hopefully the latter half of the morning will be more focused on targeting fish that are suspending a little bit as the current lets up. So we'll see how it goes. Ooh, There we go. Got one on, boys. Jesus. Keep pressure on them. A lot of current. It's gonna take me right back towards them. All right, here we go. Getting close. Ten feet. He took a hundred on that first run. He's gonna make a couple more runs here. I think. Got him. Yes. <laughs> Oh, first pass in the morning, and I got one. It's a upriver wild bright, which I can kill here, which is legal. That's super cool. All right, buddy. Woo! -hoo. Good old super bait. Oh, that's great. What a good feeling. This is my home waters, and I haven't been back here a couple years, so it feels really good to get back here and, and just have success. Like 20 minutes into the morning. It's awesome. Let it bleed out here a little bit. Let me calm down. <sighs> with a 54 feet with a 12 ounce weight, right off the point up there on a, a red super bait. 
Okay, guys. There it is. See, I would have had to have let that fish go if I was at buoy 10. But here, this is an upriver bright wild fish, legal to retain. That is super awesome. Check that out. Uh, yes. All right, let's get this bad boy on ice. It's all tagged and legal. So we're good to go there. Woo! God, that's such a good feeling. To be so... I don't know, man. Just... I just needed that. I don't I just feel like I've been uh, struggling with some some stress issues and this is such a huge win. So there's my, it's just a Pro Troll Super Bait Silver. I put this red chunk on here and then my, my favorite uh, Super Bait Original and Red Hot Smalley. And I'll show you t tied up how I rig this, but I, I use the stops that bass fishermen use for their weights so that I can peg the hooks way up there without having a belly hook. It makes it spin really, really tight. All right, guys, I just got my fish all uh, gutted and settled in. Just such a good feeling. You know, this is my old home turf. If you look up uh, the Columbia River here, there's Austin Point. See all the boats? That's right where I was, where I caught my fish. If you see that island right there, just above that island, inland, is where I lived in the town of Ridgefield for many years. I came down here all the time and caught fish in the fall. Um, so I feel really grateful to have connected with that fish today and just feels right, right? Because I mean, Upriver Bright, Hanford Reach fish are, um, their population's actually strong and that's why they let us harvest those fish here. But there are so many lower Columbia Thule spawning fish down at Bowie 10, they have to protect those fish that are going to hit all those rivers coming up. The Lewis River is really the last one that has a large Thule run. There are some Thule based like hatchery things like a Drano and stuff that's kind of a little bit odd. Um, the really endangered runs are down below the Lewis. So anyways, uh, you know, when I used to live here, I used to come down and fish off Austin Point. Things are changing here a lot. Uh, you used to be able to park and launch down here and now you can only launch. And it sounds like next year they're just gonna go to just closing it totally just because a bunch of redneck goombas come down here and tear up this area, which is set aside for environmental mitigation. And they like to go up there and tear things up with their jacked up trucks and set fires and dumb stuff like that. So not sure if this is gonna be accessible for much longer for kayakers. I imagine they might just cut off letting people drive down on the beach and then it'll just be a matter of using some beach wheels to roll it from the parking lot down if you still wanna launch here. Although there are alternative launch spots um, at a developed launch just upstream um, of the junction of the Lewis and the Columbia um, on the Lewis River side. And you can probably just launch there. It's pretty easy too. All right, guys, uh, I'll put links to the lures and um, also put links to those bead stops if you guys want to try those out. They work really good, um, especially on those long super baits, but also for any of the uh, like cut plug style baits, you can really customize the space hooking on the fly. You can just move those rubber beads if you put two of them in there. If you just pull them really hard, you can set with a bead above them, you can set wherever you want your hook spacing behind your rig. So if you're getting a lot of short strikes, you can push those hooks back you know, a few more inches on the fly, which is really nice. All right, I'll see you next time. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder.